71% of the Earth's surface is covered with bodies of water. Millions of miles of oceans, billions of species, countless untold stories. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three submarines that disappeared. The Mystery of the USS Scorpion the USS Scorpion was a United States nuclear-powered submarine that launched at the end of 1959. Part of the Skipjack class, a group of submarines with a new teardrop hull and a reactor, it began its service with the US Navy in 1960. It mysteriously went missing on the 22nd of May 1968 in the Atlantic Ocean, along with its 99 crew members. Interestingly enough, three other submarines disappeared that year from the French, Israeli, and Soviet navies. The Scorpion began its career with a two-month deployment to Europe from Connecticut in August 1960. It returned within a few months and then spent the next two years training along the eastern US coast. The crew specialized in developing and practicing warfare tactics for nuclear submarines. They practiced in the waters near the US, Bermuda, and Puerto Rico, both as attacker and defender. The Navy sent the Scorpion on a transatlantic patrol in 1964, and a European patrol in 1965. The officers and commanders were praised and earned awards for their merit and achievements. In 1967, the Scorpion was supposed to receive a thorough overhaul. It was to undergo testing and repairs to determine all of its programs functioning. The Subsafe Quality Assurance Program demands an intensive research period that can span for months. However, this was at the height of the Cold War, so there was pressure to cut corners and pass subpar equipment because the Navy feared removing a nuclear submarine out of their waters for too long. Despite its equipment long overdue for repairs and corrections, they reduced the overhaul time and waived their essential requirements to send it back to sea. The Scorpion soon after travelled to the Mediterranean but suffered a few problems with its electrical and refrigeration systems. Now 1968, it was leaving Spain to head home when the Navy ordered it to travel towards Soviet vessels in the Atlantic. It was tasked with merely observing the Soviets' activities and reporting back as they had a guided missile destroyer and two fast nuclear hunter submarines. From midnight 20th of May 1968 to the following midnight of the 21st, the Scorpion attempted to radio their naval station in Spain. The message failed to get through and reached a post in Greece instead, who then forwarded it. It was short, only stating that they were nearing the Soviet vessels at 110 meters and conducting surveillance before heading back to Virginia. The submarine never made it back home and was reported late six days after the message. The Navy sent out searches but declared it lost within a month. There were accusations that the Navy had set out on covert investigations the day before it was even supposed to arrive, having prior knowledge of its circumstances, which they vehemently denied. Five months after its disappearance, search teams discovered sections of the USS Scorpion on the Atlantic seabed at 3,000 meters, about 740 kilometers southwest of the islands where the Soviets were training. The Navy revealed that they possessed sound recordings of the ship sinking from their underwater listening devices. Although they could hear its destruction, they were not able to conclude why it occurred. There are currently many theories, the most popular one being a hydrogen explosion from changes in ventilation while going to periscope depth. Others include accidentally activating a defective torpedo that struck its own vessel, a torpedo exploding while still inside its case, or a Soviet attack. The Navy's investigations are inconclusive, but they repeatedly visit the Scorpion to measure and observe any uranium leaking and consequent environmental impacts. The Disappearance of the Chicouf Serving as the largest French Navy cruiser submarine during World War II, the Chicouf was designed to be at sea for long periods away from military bases and facilities. 
Commissioned by the French Navy in 1934, it cruised distant waters for eight years before mysteriously vanishing sometime in the night on 18th of February 1941 in the Caribbean Sea. The Surcouf was built to pursue and destroy enemy vessels, work with the Navy squadrons and connect to the French colonies. It had weapons similar to a naval warship, focusing on long-range firings and high speeds. It aimed to seek out enemies and engage in combat and had enough food and supplies for 90-day missions. It possessed torpedoes, cannons, a motorboat, a float plane and a large space for up to 40 prisoners. Despite its formidable design, it struggled a bit with firing weapons because of the time it needed to activate weapons, difficulty calculating the angle of its roll and the inability to see at night. In 1940, the submarine was in overhaul in Brittany, France, when the Germans invaded. With only one working engine and a broken rudder, it swam across the channel and joined the British. They completed its refitting to return it to free France, but tensions were high as both the British Royal Navy and the free French Navy accused each other of spying for Vichy France. Nonetheless, the Surcouf returned to the French resistance and continued fighting against the Axis powers. It began its journey when it accompanied Free France convoys in 1941 to liberate French colonies, like the islands Saint-Pierre and Miquelon. In January 1942, the Surcouf planned to travel to Sydney, Australia, through the Panama Canal and the Pacific. On the 2nd of February, it made its way down from Halifax, Virginia to Bermuda. On the 12th of February, it set off for the Panama Canal. The Chirkouf vanished on the 18th of February, 130 kilometers north of Cristobal Colón, a port town in northern Panama on the Caribbean side, as it made its way to the Pacific Ocean. It is believed that the submarine collided with an American freighter, the Thompson Likes, coming from Guantanamo Bay. The freighter's captain and crew reported running down something partially submerged, scraping against it with their side and keel. Some even claimed that they heard voices out on the water, but the freighter did not stop to find out what it hit. Investigators are doubtful that this American freighter ran into the Chakouf as there are significant size discrepancies. The submarine was much too large to have only slightly damaged the ship. Even eyewitness account descriptions recounted a smaller sized submarine. The current belief is that it might have been sunk by friendly fire from a flying boat on patrol that same night. It was an exceptionally dark night, and they perhaps had trouble recognizing whether it was a German or Japanese submarine. Another theory is that their radio was broken, and the 6th Bombardment Group in Panama attacked it. The fate of the Chakouf remains a mystery to this day. No official dive or search of the sea has been conducted, so its location is still unknown. 130 sailors were on that submarine, both from the French and British Navy, and are considered lost at sea. Gone Without a Trace – The USS Capellin The USS Capellin was part of the Balao class of submarines and named after a tiny smelt fish found in the cold North Pacific, Atlantic, and Arctic Oceans. It was first launched in January 1943 and immediately received a Navy commission by June. It quickly set sail on its first mission in September of that same year. The submarine travelled from Connecticut to Brisbane, Australia to conduct patrols in the surrounding waters and prevent Japanese attacks. On its very first war patrol, the Capellin managed to sink a massive Japanese cargo ship out in the seas surrounding Indonesia earning the crew high praise for their successful attack. At the beginning of November, the submarine returned to Darwin, Australia, for an overhaul. It required some corrections because there were slight defects in the radar and hatch mechanisms, and certain parts were making too much noise. Within a week, the Capellin was back out in the water and set off for its second patrol. This time, the officers monitored the trade routes through the seas surrounding Indonesia and the Philippines. Their task was to observe, engage if necessary, and return during the cover of night on the 6th of December. While they were out at sea, 
they came within sight of another American submarine, the USS Bonefish. Unaware that it was a friendly vessel, the Capellin dove to escape, so the commander quickly sent a sonar message relaying his identity. The Capellin acknowledged the notice and identification, but nothing further. It continued with its dive and patrol mission. That interaction was the last known contact of the submarine Capellin. Investigators discovered the only attack reported in the area was in Japanese records by one of their mine layer vessels near Indonesia. The report specifically stated that the submarine attack produced many black oil and water columns filled with wood splinters. Researchers and the Navy only later discovered that the Japanese had placed minefields in the areas that the Capellin had been monitoring. They suspect that a mine explosion had destroyed the submarine. The submarine and her crew received a battle star for their service because, despite having been in commission for only half a year and one patrol, they managed to sink over 3,000 tons of enemy shipping. There has been no search for the wreckage and no trace of the submarine or its crew, so the Navy listed the USS Capellin as lost with unknown cause. But what do you make of these submarines that have mysteriously disappeared? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.